welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're gonna to give you an update on the activities of Youth Sailing Virginia and the new pier behind the um, Fort Monroe Visitors Center. My guests are Gary Bodie and Rose Hobart, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's really exciting because um, it generated a lot of enthusiasm when this Pier, uh, pier was being built and it opened a lot of opportunities for people and um, there was also some controversy and, and we'll get to that in a little bit but you guys this is the first full summer you've had it so tell me what's going on out there okay so we are teaching middle school aged children how to learn to sail in two week sessions half days so we have morning sessions and afternoon sessions we draw children from all over the peninsula, and uh, we've had, actually had a child from Virginia Beach and from Williamsburg, you know, the greater peninsula. So it's pretty exciting. And we also are working with some partners. Uh, we have Parks and Recs uh, campers that come over. Uh, Boys and Girls Club is a new partner of ours, and Alternatives, Inc. So, and, you know, I just want to say up front, that was one of the kind of controversies early on was that sailing, and. I'll let you speak to this, the perception that sailing was, you know, only for rich people whose parents sailed and who could afford boats, and it was a very elitist sport. Um, I want to turn to Gary on this one. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, sure, and, and, and at one point, you know, tennis and golf were considered the same kind of sport, and that's a long time ago, and nobody thinks about that anymore. And, and sailing still does have a bit of that image. Uh, one of the beauties of our program is there's no boat ownership involved. We, UCLA, Virginia, we own the boats, the city helps, and Fort Monroe Authority help provide the facilities, and we offer lessons. And then when we move to high school sailing or college sailing, which I spent you know, part of my career doing, again, it's provided boats. So you don't bring your boat to a race, you show up, and everybody uses these equalized boats. So it's a way to sail without owning a boat. Right. And that, you know, one of the unique opportunities in Hampton and the Hampton Roads, Virginia, is the water. Recreation activities taking advantage of that natural resource that we have that so many localities, I'm originally from Ohio, don't have. That's right. So, Gary, before, um, you know, we get too far, this is for a wide range. I mean, Rose has talked about middle schoolers, but you guys are accommodating about how many, how many kids now? And I'm going to say kids. I'm sorry. It shows my age, but young people. You know, our goal is to, our goal for the greater peninsula, because there's other sailing programs that we cooperate with, our goal is to teach a thousand kids to sail every summer, you know? We're new only, kids. Uh, new kids. Okay. Um, and that's actually, compared to other sports, probably a small number, but we're only in the hundreds. Uh, combined programs. And you see in Virginia, I don't know, Rose, we're going to do close to 100 this year? Close to 75 yeah. to 80, I, th um, I would say. But our vision's big. That's a small number. That barely sustains the sport going forward, you know. And, uh, of course, people move here and people move away from here. But we need, we need more kids around in the U.S. to have the opportunity to learn to sail. That's great. So, so the barriers then, um, you don't ha have to own a boat. You have, is, is there a cost involved in this program? Like, how does that work, Rose? Well, through our partners, the partners provide the fees for that. And um, then individuals who sign up do, do pay. We do offer scholarships because we have received a couple of grants that assist with um, the fees. Uh, one, of the, one of the main things is that the children need to know how to swim. And through the efforts of people in Parks and Rec and other programs, Boys and Girls Club, for example, that's a great initiative for them. When you say to a child, if you learn to swim, you can learn to sail. So getting these kids on the water starts with that. And doesn't that make sense, especially there at Fort Monroe, where there's a pool and it's a Parks and Rec pool and it's accessible right. to everybody um, to get that water acclimation. As close as we live to the water, we should all know how to swim. Accidents can happen anytime, That's whether you're exactly fishing right. or anything else, at the beach, mm. anything. So is it intimidating? Like learning to sail, you learned as an adult, right? Yeah, that was very intimidating. I think it's harder the older, the older you are. But uh, I, I, I find the kids, in about three days, they're driving their own boat. They're driving a boat together with a crew. It's amazing to me. And um, the way, that, the way the uh, students approach it is this is an adventure. 
And yes, they might be a little intimidated, and we start out with uh, teaching them basic uh, tacking skills, how to, how to move the tiller, how to make a boat I was going to say, made. no, you're going to have to talk in really basic terms. Oh, tacking I'm sorry. means you're, you're <laughs> turning the boat. Turning the boat. Turning okay, the boat, gotcha. Right. But, um, and the tiller also turns the boat, but in a different way, right? Well, or steers, kind of. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, but um, when they go through the very first day and they, they go through a cap, what's called a capsize drill, and they're very intimidated at the beginning, but then they want to do it over and over and over because it's fun. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we're in protected waters out there at Fort, at um, Mill, Mill Creek, at Fort Monroe. And so there's not a power boats out there to intimidate or create extra waves. It's very safe, very protected, and, and the kids can find that, that often if, if a boat turns over or if they just want to go out there for a swim and we're with them, they can stand up. It's shallow, so yeah, it's yeah. a perfect, perfect place to teach. That's great. So Gary, you've been in, in sailing for a um, huge, huge part of your life. <laughs> yes. Um, pretty much almost a career. Tell us about the benefits of sailing and, and the opportunity. Certainly not every kid is gonna be an Olympic sailor, but what is it, what is it brought? What can it do for people? Well, you know, I, I, starting from a, a, a child, a kid that might just take one or two week session, okay? They're gonna learn port starboard. They're gonna learn bow stern, forward aft. And if they go to work at the shipyard, you know, they're gonna know something, you know? So there's a, if, if their family fishes, and you know, they're going to be a better fisherman. Um, now those are just some skills and some examples in our maritime community where you know, terminology and, and things like that can be, can be helpful. What I, you know, what, there's two things that draw me to sailing. Um, one is self-reliance. You know, it's a little bit like a kid that first learns to ride a bike and now they're a little bit more mobile, okay? And, you know, they're in command of their bike. Well, now you, you have this boat and you can go... You know, you can't go around the world in these little boats, but right. you can, you know, you're, you're in command, you're in charge, uh, there's responsibility. And then the other thing I think that teaches, there's some real life lessons in all sports, but self-reliance, you know, so you have this boat, you know, uh, you're responsible, uh, at least for an hour, uh, you have a teammate in the boat with you, and, and you learn to like, okay, this is, I'm in charge, this is, you know, and I'm responsible. So I think there's some real life lessons as well as some technical skills. And Rose hasn't mentioned uh, our STEM program yet, which is another uh, big add on. So that combination is really excited because I think kids and everyone actually learns better by doing because it reinforces that academic thing that's in your mind. But when you see it and do it, it makes a huge amount of difference. That's, that's certainly true. Physicality, it's called combining the lessons with the physicality of what you're teaching is very important. And it's fun. Students want, don't really want to go to summer school <laughs> unless they can also have that activity. That's and you know, I used to um, sometimes work with Boy Scouts and be a chaperone, and we'd have to go really far to go to Boy Scout High Adventure Camp and learn, you know, water skills or whatever it is. There were all kinds of different ones, but this is right here, and you don't have those transportation costs, you don't have the overnight costs, you know, that, that a camp would be. And it just involves so many more people. There's another point I wanted to bring up about um, sailing in general for, for children of this age in particular, uh, is that it allows them to get a better balance, I think, in life, because right now everyone's so involved with their cell phones, and they're, they, when they come out to our camp, they're totally unplugged. So I think that's that's really a great thing for these kids, and they're still having fun. Yeah, that's it. Well, now let's talk about kids having fun. Maybe we could hear from one of the kids. Okay. <laughs> it's because I know he's here today. Gary, do you want to add anything before you leave? You know, just a progress report real quick. Okay. Um, the city has built this pier that we're able to use. We've been able to lease a building from Fort Monroe that's perfect as a sailing center. And U.S. Sailing has accredited our community sailing program. So, you know, I pinch myself with the progress we've made in just a short time with our program. That's really exciting. Did you expect that? I know you've been involved since the beginning. I, I, I have to, again, pinch myself. It's magic. It, it's just like everything has fallen into place for our program. You have a dedicated group, I think. You're both board members. Um, you've got a lot of people working we do very hard, group. giving of their own time to do this. 
Okay, well, we're going to pause just a second and, and bring on Theo. Thank you, Great. Gary. Thank you. Okay, and now I want you to meet Theo Dennis. Welcome, Theo. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you. Now, tell us how old you are and what school you go to. I'm, I'm 12, and I go to Phoenix. And how did you get involved in sailing? So last year, I went to a camp, and for one thing, one activity they had was to go to a sailing camp, and I said, okay, let's do that, because, you know, it was free, and... There's nothing else to do. So. That's so cool. Now, I'm just going to put in a plug for the city because this is the city's city-run Parks and Rec camp, and it's an all-day camp. And so this way you spent your mornings learning to sail? Yes, I did. Uh, some people go in the afternoon. I might actually do that today. Because oh, you missed your, uh, your morning? Yeah. Well, thank you for coming by here, by the way. Why do you like sailing? It's just... The, the, free, the feeling of freedom that it has when you're out on the water just going, especially when you're skippering. What is skippering? Oh, it's, it's when you steer. Oh, okay. So now I, you can tell I don't know much about sailing. Is this one person on a boat or are these two people boats that you work on? I, I sail on two people boats, FJs, and uh, there's, one, there's a skipper and then there's a crew. You can sail with one person, but I'm not there yet. So there's some teamwork involved in communicating with that other person, or you guys are going under, right? Right. Now, did you know how to swim before this program, or did you learn to swim because I, of it? I knew, I knew how to swim before this. It did help my swimming a lot, because I didn't want to be bad at swimming at sailing camp. <laughs> So last year when you started, we didn't have the big pier, right, Rose? You were, we did not. You were going out to the boats a little bit offshore. Yeah. We had to get on a motorboat to get out there every day. It was, it was pretty cool. That sounds kind of fun, actually, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> it, was, it was really cool. So were you involved in other sports or activities? Uh, well, I was in, I was in a, marching, a marching program called the Marching Elites. Oh yeah, that's a great program. I know them. Yeah, and I was and I was really deep in band because I had jazz band and marching band and concert band. And so it was it was a lot, but it was worth it. <laughs> so you can fit this into your other activities then, right? Yes. Where do you go to school? Phoenix. And you were already on uh, in, a, in a JV kind of situation with sailing? Yes. Um, they let me come into the sailing team, and I, play, I, I sail for Bethel. I'm the only member right now. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. They let you be. You are the sailing team at Bethel, right? Yeah. But you want more people to join you. Yeah, I've got... Well, when I started, I had a couple of friends who came with me, so I'm going to ask them to join the sailing team. And I already asked one of them, and he said he'll think about it. So, yeah. You're getting up there. You need at least a crew. If you're going to skip her, you've got to have somebody else with you. Yeah. So this really has changed what the city's high schools offer. Right, Rose? How many schools have teams? Well, counting Bethel's one-person team. <laughs> Kikatan, Phoebus. Um, Hampton High School and Bethel. And you're starting these kids at middle school, but then they continue through either Youth Sailing Virginia or their high school teams or both if they choose That's to, right. right? That's right. And Youth Sailing Virginia offers the boats, power boats, and a practice venue for many, many teams in this, in this city and beyond on the peninsula. Uh, we have practicing on Tuesdays and Thursdays starting with the fall season will be Peninsula Catholic and all the Hampton City Schools. And then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we'll have Walsingham and HRA. So in the fall, and I guess last year, you'll go after school two days a week, right? Yes. And that's, I mean, okay, the city of Hampton is really small in general, but if you're in the Bethel zone, that's, uh, that, that's quite a distance. Your family must yeah. support you, right? They do. They support me a lot. I probably wouldn't have a ride if I if my family didn't want to help. So I really thank them for that. Is anybody else in your family sail? No, my sister did a long time ago. 
but I don't think it lasted. So, yeah, it's just me. Just you. What do you think you learn or do you, you know, do you feel like you learn from sailing or are you just out there for that freedom and the wind and? I feel like we learn a lot. Like, well, we learn how to test how clean and good the water is. We learned how to measure the wind speed and how to tell where the wind's coming from. We learned how to steer a boat. We learned how to crew in a boat. We learned, we, well, it helped a lot with teamwork. So I feel like we're learning a lot from the sailing program. That's great. And having fun. What a yeah. bonus. Well, we're going to wrap up. Is there anything that you want to, uh, I know I've put you on the spot and you have done a great <laughs> job, Theo. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, it's come, come sail. Okay. It's, it's really fun. All right. And Rose, is there anything you want to add before we close? I know you said you were accredited. Yes, we are accredited. And our, our instructors who are our paid staff, the rest of us are all volunteers. Every member of the board. Uh, we have no staff other than our instructors and then in the fall and in the spring, a coach. Uh, they're, they're wonderful, they're enthusiastic, and, and most of them came up through high school sailing in this area. So they're like college students they're, now, they're, pretty much? We have several job. college students, and we have a couple of high school uh, sailors who became accredited at, with their level one instruction, instructor certification, which is very good and not, not easy to get. So we're, we're very happy that we're able to offer our op opportunities for employment in the summer. That's great. And I do want to recap, because um, I don't know if we said this on air. I know you told me beforehand. Last summer, you had how many middle school participants? 13. <laughs> and boy, you were one of just a few, weren't you? Yeah. Wow. And then this year, how many are going through? About 75, 75 to 80. That's um, that's a big number. It is. <laughs> and you and again, these you know you can get scholarships or other kinds of things, and they can come through the Boys and Girls Club, the Parks and Rec, or just individuals, that's, right? That's correct. And alternatives Inc. And alternatives. Yeah. So before we close, how can people learn more about the program or get involved in the program? Okay, they can go on our website, which is usailingva.org, or they can call 757-602-0020. And we're happy to help them. Okay. Thank you both so much. And good luck, Theo. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope if you know someone in middle school or high school who might be interested in sailing, that you know how to get them involved. And don't forget that pier is not just for youth sailing. There's a recreational pier that is used for um, the community center. And, and you can go out on that, not the sailing boats necessarily, but other vessels and enjoy the Mill Creek. Thanks for watching.